A bombshell report was recently declassified showing that Chinese-based hackers hacked up to 23 US-based pipeline operators. Also, crazy news about iOS and mobile devices being vulnerable to a specific kind of spyware and the implications are insane. So stay to the end where we talk about that starting now. First, let's talk about China hacking US-based pipeline operators. A, new de a newly declassified report shows that hackers associated with the Chinese government managed to hack up to 23 pipeline operators based in the United States between 2011 and 2013. Now, of course, obviously, this report isn't necessarily earth shattering. Not only did this happen a decade ago, uh, but because it's now being declassified, it's probably safe to assume that the issue has been remediated and other steps are being taken to ensure that a similar kind of attack doesn't happen again. However, that being said, if the colonial pipeline incident is any indication, these kinds of attacks on critical energy infrastructure and in particular on oil pipelines, they have pretty significant impacts. In fact, the report goes as far as saying that attackers had enough control of the pipelines themselves that they were able to enact physical consequences of this attack. Now, if you remember to the Colonial Pipelines attack, the attackers didn't actually manage to gain access to any of the systems that control the pipelines themselves. Uh, the pipeline was shut down as a precautionary measure to contain the spread of the ransomware that it hit other production systems with the business end of Colonial Pipeline. However, in this case, where an attacker can get access to the critical infrastructure systems, you, you could actually see some pretty devastating impacts. Now this also, now this report also shed some light on the activities of the Chinese government, uh, the Ministry of State Security and the People's Liberation Army in cyberspace. We've mentioned before with other situations on this channel that attribution can be incredibly difficult. Uh, and so if a report submitted to the government is confident enough in actually attributing an attack to the Chinese government, then it's probably safe to say that the due diligence has been completed and that this attack really was from the Chinese government and its elements. So seeing that they would be interested, obviously that they would be interested in attacking the critical infrastructure of a country that to them may be an adversary or a potential adversary. I mean, it makes sense. It, it kind of fits into their strategic objectives, but it's definitely something that on the civilian side, we have to consider with you know what are we doing on our on our part to make sure that, that we are securing our environment there's gonna be a video dropping on this channel here pretty soon detailing how how cybersecurity feeds into the overall national security picture uh, so stay tuned for that next let's talk about smartphone security and more specifically iOS security and spyware I was scrolling on Twitter and someone mentioned something about military grade spyware and no that didn't make any sense to me either <laughs> <laughs> However, allegations have surfaced that the NSO group, which is an Israeli-based organization that is attributed to creating all kinds of different spyware and being a vendor to a number of different companies and countries worldwide, had developed a kind of spyware that targeted iOS devices. Now, iOS security is notoriously pretty locked down. Uh, and not only is, it, is that the case, but also just because Windows-based products are used much more uh, worldwide, you see much more malware targeting Windows systems. Of course, it would probably be safe to assume that if the roles were reversed, if Macs were used worldwide, you'd probably see more malware for Macs than you would Windows. But that being said, Macs and iOS devices do have pretty good security built in. And iOS security is kind of one of those things that just isn't talked about nearly as much because all the conversations are being had about Windows devices. So spyware targeting iOS devices obviously created a pretty big stir in the InfoSec community. Now, who exactly possessed the spyware? Some countries that were listed in this report by Wired include the United Arab Emirates, Mexico, India, Hungary, and Saudi Arabia, among others. And basically, they had been using this spyware to keep track of anybody from political opponents to criminals to, you know, what have you. Just a number of different targets that they were interested in. So why would they call it military-grade spyware? Well, that beats me. I mean, that's probably just one of those things about you have some people that maybe they just aren't as familiar with malware. It also might just be pretty new malware. And so, like a zero day does that count as military grade? You know, there's ransomware that targeted critical infrastructure like Colonial. Is that military grade? Because that could serve a military purpose. Whatever, we're gonna leave that behind. The main thing that we wanna talk about though with this is not only who and the what, 
but uh, let's also kind of talk about the how, right? So how could this ransomware take advantage of flaws in iOS devices? And the report mentioned that this takes advantage of zero click vulnerabilities. Now, what exactly is zero click? That's really just, if you think about how malware runs on a system, you can plant the malware on a system, but you have to somehow get it to execute. And so you can do this a number of ways. You could do it by having it attach itself to an underlying process on a system, or you could trick the user to execute the malware. So this being quote unquote zero click, that basically means that this doesn't require any interaction from the user. You do not need the user to execute this exploit. Uh, it basically will just attach to an underlying process. And so, and then it will execute and, and, and run the spyware and then do all the other things that malware does, right? Which is definitely interesting to think about that, you know, could I have been hacked? Probably not. And that kind of leads me to this point. If you're watching this video and you're and you're watching this and you're probably freaking out, you're about to pull your tinfoil hat and your shotgun out and think about how Big Brother's at it again, well, no. First off, and I say this lovingly and I'm putting myself in this category as well, 99.99% of all of us, just plebes in the world, we do not live interesting enough lives for the federal government or any other government for that matter to really want to spy on us to that degree. Think of all the legal loopholes that especially our government would have to jump through in order to actually do that. Uh, and if history has been any indication, it's really more trouble than it's worth. And think about all the other legal ramifications of another country targeting US citizens. Yeah, way more trouble than it's worth. So really the likelihood of any of us being targeted by that or by this malware is, is pretty slim. However, that being said, that is not an excuse to, uh, to slack off on security and not try to protect ourselves from this malware. And that's kind of why I mentioned that it's zero click. We really need to be extra vigilant. It's not gonna try to socially engineer you into running the, uh, the exploit itself, it's going to run in the background. So we're gonna have to take extra steps. We're gonna have to try to take updates from Apple. If you're not using an iOS device, then Google or whatever vendor uh, your smartphone hails from. But we also need to see increased attention from both Apple and Google and the other vendors to make sure that these devices are supported, that they get the security patches that they need. Uh, and, and these devices can be secured from spyware like this. So with all that, like this video was helpful, comment, subscribe. This channel focuses on cybersecurity. So if you like this video, I mean, we not only talk about cybersecurity news, we have interviews, uh, and we also talk about some of the concepts of cybersecurity and what you can do to get into the industry if you're interested. So hit that subscribe button, it's definitely worth it. Have a good one.